Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring around a bite-sized pieces. So just like the thumbnail suggests, this is probably the most bear scenario I could possibly find. And it's from Seeking Alpha. Uh, the author is Clem Chambers, and it talks about Bitcoin crash 2021, moon or doom. Take a close look at these charts. And we're gonna take a look at uh, the charts, what he's talking about. And I'm actually gonna bring in an alternative opinion from CJ Reichel, uh, who is from Market Rebellion. And we'll do a quick interview about what he thinks if this is even remotely possible. On top of that, we'll take a look at what is going on with Bitcoin mining as uh, Bitcoin miners are getting into the nuclear power division, which I think is pretty fascinating. And also, I want to take a look at a really good interview from Tony at Thinking Crypto as he brings in Alex Mashinsky, who says that the uh, bull run is still on and he still predicts uh, Bitcoin at 160,000. And he lets lay that uh, they are also getting into Bitcoin mining over there at Celsius. And then finally, I just want to do a quick update and tell you that I will be on Invest Answers with James tonight in about an hour or so. So uh, let's push this video out as fast as we can, huh? All right, so that is what is going on. Let's take a look at what's going on in the market. And it is just downright awful. I think it's the 15th, July 15th. And uh, that's what's going on. 1.28 trillion market cap. Hey, we knew July was gonna suck and uh, it did not disappoint. So here we are. So let's take a look at what is going on as far as like behind the scenes and how uh, the coins themselves are not doing so hot. So what do we got here? So we got Bitcoin. And it looks like uh, we're at $31,000, three to five. So it's still about 30, that's not too bad. 24 hours down 5%, Ethereum is down 5%. Uh, Tether, nobody cares. Binance coin, and pretty much five to six, even 7% down. 10% for Matic, ouchie, that's pretty bad. And then, uh, yeah, just keeps going down, down, and down. And this is, it doesn't really matter just how great the news becomes or what's going on. Uh, we see that uh, this narrative, uh, there's only so much they can push. And uh, what it says to me is that there's, to make it very simple, there's more sellers uh, than there are buyers. And that's really what it comes down to, bulls and bears. So let's take a look at uh, one of the most bearish uh, that I have ever possibly seen. And this was sent to me by a subscriber on Twitter, and I had to cover it because when I, when I saw it, I'm like, this is just one of many type of articles that are going to come out for a super bear scenario. So yesterday I talked about how I am continuing to buy in the cryptocurrency. I continue dollar cost average. I just did it today, as a matter of fact, on Voyager, on my automatic purchases. And the reason I bring this to everybody's attention is because when I was going through this in 2017, 2018, all the channels were the same. They were like, it's going to the moon. It's going to the moon. 8,000, 12,000, 19,000, almost 20,000. It's going to the moon. It's going to the moon. Then we drip, we dip back to 16,000. It's going to the moon. Then it went down to 13,000. It's going to the moon. Then 10,000. It's going to the moon. And then people were still talking about how it's going to a million and everything else. Look, you got to be a realist around here. And you got to actually call a spade a spade. When, when the market is sucking, you got to say the market sucks. And that's pretty much what it is. Now, I'm not saying that what this article is talking about, that it's going to go down to $8,000 Bitcoin, which would probably mean that the market cap would fall around 300, 400, something. That's crazy. 300, 400 billion. But I need to show you all the different things that are out there. So you can look at that and go, that doesn't make sense. Okay, maybe a little bit of this, maybe a little bit of that. And you can just be a little bit more informed. I am not here to be uh, Mr. Hopium and everything's going to the moon and we're going to a million dollars. There's a ton of channels out there for you for that. I'm just an investor. I still believe in the market. I still think we're gonna go places. Um, and uh, I just, just wanna make everybody aware. So what's going on here? So Bitcoin crash 2021, moon or doom. Take a look at these charts. And this is from Clem. I like Clem, seems like a pretty good guy. Uh, very, cons very conservative. Uh, he's a CEO of Global Stock Shares and Crypto Information website, advfn.com. Amazon number one bestseller, 100 ways to pick stock market winners. And just so you know, anybody can be an Amazon bestseller. Uh, it, just depends on, <laughs> it depends on what category you're in. Anyhow, so Clem's got a very thought-provoking article here. And he says, look, I expect Bitcoin, he gives a summary, which is great. I expect Bitcoin to break down soon and settle below 20,000. Uh, you can also make a bull case from the charts. Uh, from a TA perspective, it might be a classic W form recovery, and it's a trader's paradise, but noise trading is an extremely difficult and costly game. So just be aware and just be very careful. And that's why, like when we talk about things as far as like what to trade, if you are a trader, that's why we take a look at trade the chain for sentiment analysis. That's why we talk. I bring in my friends over there at Mark Rebellion so you can learn about technical analysis and you can do some fundamental stuff, which is what I usually talk about. So this is why like all the noise, it's best to get as much information as you possibly can. So 
Uh, Clem here says, <laughs> this is crazy. I'm not a long-term bear. I'm a strong long-term bull. If you call expecting another huge rally around 2024, a long-term bull stance. Well, I guess, I mean, if, if you say it like that, it is. It is a long-term bull stance. I mean, just give it three years and it'll be there. I mean, look, everybody that you ever going to talk to about crypto, except for that gold bug nonsense guy, is going to say that there is a recovery. What goes down will come up at some point. Not, not every time. I mean, like, I mean, there's like some business just go to the ground. They just, uh, that's it. But for crypto, the question isn't, will it recover? The question is when. So really when it comes down to it, I have my theory. I think the recovery comes August, September, October, somewhere around there. I thought I was thinking August might be a little bit longer, but the question is, what if it's not? What if it goes to September? Uh, can I hold on? What if it goes to November, December? Can I hold on? Because I can't tell you what to do. This is investment opinion, not investment advice. And the answer to me is yes, because I see where we're going. I've seen these different cycles. Even if we have an elongated cycle, so much so that's 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 what we have to deal with it just gives me a lot longer to accumulate and that's just how it goes so uh he states you can also make a bull case from the charts and it does well to examine both viewpoints before making up your mind totally agree and this is the crazy one he says this is the most drastic and you can see like this is essentially from october 2020 to april 21 when we hit our all-time highs or may and it just plummets all the way down almost below eight thousand dollars Pretty crazy. I don't really see the, the, the TA part of this, just nice nice lines, uh, but that's it. And then he says, here's a less drastic one. He draws a line to 11,000, so okay. Uh, and then he goes on to say, the bull case is strongly held. They And he says, the bulls are right in the long term, but just not in the near and medium term. Again, if you talk to anybody, for most type of investors, unless they are really far out there and super duper gold bugs and that's all they get, they're gonna tell you, there's a recovery. There's a massive rally coming. The question is when. So from a technical analysis point of view, they expect the current chart development turning into the classic W form. You will see time and time again. And this is what he's talking about right here. We go down and we're, we've come up a little bit. Now we're in July. We're going down again, as we just uh, saw. And then we might see a, a big of recovery, August, September or so, up to 60,000 or back to 60,000. And then he talks about this. These are the moon boys, essentially that thinks that it's going to uh, 80,000, 100,000. And uh, me and Alex Mashinsky do think that Bitcoin will hit 100,000 before the end of the year. I think it's between 100 and 130,000. Alex Mashinsky thinks it's 160,000. So it uh, depends on who you, you believe is that's uh, what it could be true. Anyhow, and here's some great points that Clem makes. And for every article that's out there, you have to take what you believe or what you think is actually valuable and take it for your own. And this is what I took. The, no, the novice investor or trader puts much store about being right when in reality it is about making money. And that is the exact truth. For a bear, what might they do if Bitcoin starts to rally? And what he's talking about here is he's like, I'm going to give you a scenario for the bear and the bull and what he would do. And that's the only thing that you can really do is just say, look, here's the scenarios that could play out. We could go, could go sideways, could go down a little bit, could go up massively. So I'm going to play it in either way. So he says, look, if it's a bear, if you're a, if you're a bear like he is, he is a bear. What would you do if Bitcoin shoots up? He says, don't essentially don't get into Bitcoin. Don't jump on DeFi. And I think a lot of people would agree with him that uh, Ethereum and the, De and the DeFi projects are probably going to rally massively as the market goes up. And he says, meanwhile, for the trader, this is these are the guys in between. This is trading heaven. However, as many find out, noise trading is extremely difficult and a costly game. And that's what we talk about as far as trade the chain and, and uh, market rebellion. And then lastly, and this is what uh, is the bearish scenario. The strategy for him remains. Wait for a final leg down and then begin a dollar cost average back into crypto for the long haul to the next happening. And I will just say this. If you take a look at what he believes it to be, it's going to be somewhere between $8,000 and $11,000 Bitcoin. So he's waiting for that to actually dollar cost average in. But the question for me is, what if we don't hit that? What if we just go down to what I think we're going to go down to, which is $26,000, and then we start to do sideways and recover? What if we go to $22,000 or $20,000? Do you just miss it the whole way and then just let it go all the way up? Or how, do, how is that play? Or you just, you just throw your arms in the air and go, okay, it hit $40,000. I guess that's just what it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in... Uh, person much smarter than me on technicals, CJ Reichel from Market Rebellion, and have him answer these types of questions. 
All right, everybody. So we just looked at that uh, totally bearish uh, article and what was going on. So I'm not uh, the TA master. That's why I bring in people like way smarter than me, like CJ Reichel from Market Rebellion. CJ, thanks for coming on. Talk to us about this, the most, the most bearish article I've seen in like quite some time. First of all, thanks for having me, Rob. Honored yeah. to be back on Digital Asset News. But yeah, that I saw you send me that earlier this morning, and that was like the most bearish outcome I had really ever seen from a TA perspective. And many times, what I've said, you know, when I come on here, uh, is that you know, although I love technical analysis, it's more for perfect entry and exit points as opposed to the overall fundamental structure of the trend. I always think it's important to have a good understanding of fundamentals, things like the stock to flow ratio to kind of pair with your own technical analysis. That's just kind of always my approach. But uh, would you like to get into some of these charts then? Let's take a look. Because I mean, first of all, it's just interesting how this all kind of played out. So. This was uh, the article we just talked about. So talk to me about how this looks to you and, and the whole setup. This was uh, the most, this was the astronaut version. This is the moonshot. And then, whoops, up here, this was the most, <laughs> most bearish version you could possibly get. What can I really say about that? Like, I do see us currently breaking critical levels, namely at 32 and 31K. And I have a chart that I'll show in just a moment here that is a little bit more um, thorough analysis, I guess I'll say. Sure. Um, but this chart really has no bottom, right? Like it goes even way below 20K, uh, which I just don't really see as being practical. I mean, I can tell you firsthand just on the institutional side, there's an immense amount of interest building, whether it be through you know new clearing houses emerging within investment banks or various cryptocurrency hedge funds coming up. You know the interest in the space is still increasing and you know when you can when you think about that fundamentally i don't think it matches the technicals when you just put uh you know a straight line down which is a breakdown from this head and shoulders pattern um so that's what i would have to say about that but uh i would love to be able to show kind of my own interpretation or forecast of what we might see in the coming weeks to months sure yeah and then pull that up and then uh, I'll, I'll share with everybody. And while you're getting that, uh, let me just make mention of if you are looking to follow somebody who's been in the space for quite some time, CJ's got a great Twitter showing over there uh, at Chris Reichel. And I'll put that link in the description below. But uh, if you're just looking for practical information about technical analysis and really breaks it down. And not only that, I, I like how CJ also quotes a lot of the... Um, the elders or uh, the the old sages in the traditional market space. I've seen a, a bunch of Rothschilds. I've seen uh, a bunch of different things, and like it's it's all like sound advice, and it's the same thing that I've been talking about for a long time. And of course, he covers cryptocurrency, so definitely uh, I've got him on mine. And uh, and again, I'll link that in the description below. So uh, CJ, let me come over here. What do we got, or what do you want me? What do you want to show? Yeah, so just want to flash the disclaimer real quick. Nothing said by Digital Asset News or Market Rebellion should be considered financial advice. Uh, but with that out of the way, let's go through the analysis. So right uh, recently, you know, we had kind of this, this symmetrical triangle, and now we've broken down from that. And we've kind of gone into something known as like a descending triangle now, which has much more bearish implications. So if we check that out, on this chart, you can see that we're already starting that breakdown. And this period of time reminds me very much of 2018 and kind of the complacency that we saw there. And you can see that these triangle formations, whether it be through ascending or descending triangles, are incredibly familiar to Bitcoin traders because we've had quite a few of them throughout our time. But what this reminds me of is the 2018 period right here in which we had this descending triangle and eventually broke down. Yeah. So if we are to break down, you know, where are our targets in the short term? Um, well, first, I would say 28K because that is our level of previous support that we had hit prior. And then the final target is ultimately like 25K. I don't really see us going below those levels in the short term, I will say that I do agree with that particular author on the bearish side. Um, I am in bearish positions right now, um, 
but I still am a very long-term bull and believer in Bitcoin. And I'll show you a little something that I think is pretty interesting when we zoom out and look at the weekly chart. And it's because we had a very uh, clear head and shoulders pattern. Holy smokes. We had a very clear head and shoulders pattern um, that eventually brought us down to our current levels. And we're breaking that neckline, right? We're breaking the support level of about 31K, which we came down initially after our first run to about 30K. And so, you know, what the technician that we looked at previously basically just had a straight line, you know, downward all the way to 8,000 or 13,000. And, you know, I just don't see that being practical. I mean, if Bitcoin dies, like, yeah, I mean, eventually it goes to zero, but that just doesn't seem practical. Like I said, with that fundamental and institutional demand that like many of us witness firsthand. So one pattern that's pretty intriguing to me is kind of the conjoined head and shoulders, because if we are to break down right here, I do see us finding a short term bottom uh, very quickly and then likely finding some buy pressure on the way up. This actually happened in the S&P 500 uh, earlier in this year. And this is kind of a, a very textbook example. You know, we have the left shoulder, we have our top and then we come down and break the neckline. But then this right shoulder of the first head and shoulders pattern then becomes the left shoulder. And so these head and shoulders pattern ultimately have a conjoined uh, leg in which they become one. And so these patterns actually do kind of turn out more often than we think. Um, and I think that would fit a very fundamental and very technical uh, setup if we are to kind of continue this bearish downturn in the short term. But when we talk about things like stock to flow and when we talk about things on chain and, and much more from a fundamental perspective, all of that work still suggests, you know, 100K, maybe not by the end of the year, but at least, you know, going into the spring and kind of that particular time. Holy smokes. Yeah. So we're looking at like I always said that July is going to be an awful month. And uh, so far, I've been correct. I thought there's going to be a turnaround in August, but it looks like for your reverse head and shoulders, we might see August actually things bleeding into August and then reversing all the way, maybe in a middle end. And then September, October, November, we see more of the fireworks. Yeah. Um, you know, this is particularly true in the stock market, but also sometimes true in the cryptocurrency market. We typically get stagnation and not a lot of volume over the summer months in general. Then once we have a lot of individuals going back to work, you know, we have uh, wealthy individuals returning from the Hamptons and all type of things like that. There becomes much more volume around the first months in the fall. You know, you have people back behind their screens. They're not really doing those summer activities, so to speak, as well. And so I think that we will likely begin another leg up to the bull cycle sometime in the fall or winter of 2021 towards the end of the year. It just, you know, markets are cyclical. It's it's something that cannot be really denied. It's not an absolute, but historically that would suggest something of that sort. Yeah. So like like I've always said, like I know, I believe, I, I, don't, I don't know anything. No one really knows. No one's got a crystal ball. I believe that uh, we're going to have a turnaround and we should see a pretty good market. The real question is when, and that is the really the, the hardest thing. So CJ, before we take off two things, first of all, everybody, <laughs> as a reminder, check out, whoops, check out CJ over there at Twitter. And then also uh, just real quick, CJ, any, um, any thoughts on Bitcoin going to zero? What would be the scenario where Bitcoin goes to zero? Because I was listening to Alex Mashinsky over on Kitco, and they asked him the same question, and uh, he was mm -hmm. like, and he had a he had a, a reasonable answer. I just want to hear yours. What do you think that it could actually happen? Yeah, I mean, it's so strange, right? Because even altcoins that have been fifty one percent attacked have not gone to zero, and so you have to think about confidence in an asset and what makes something completely go to zero, and you know it. If it's not traded and nobody has liquidity for it, then it will, you know, go to zero, uh, technically. But you know, a massive lack of demand obviously makes price go down 80% or 90% of things like that. But as long as two people want to trade Bitcoin and there's liquid exchanges that can allow them to, 
I, I don't see that it's going to zero. Also, there's just too many, there's too much fundamental value here. Um, the concept of being able to send a scarce digital asset anywhere in the world in under 30 minutes is an incredible uh, value proposition. And it still kind of amazes me that certain people will deny that that has value because I do believe it has a significant amount of value. So yeah. I'm interested to hear kind of what Alex Mashinsky said and how he answered that question as well. He pretty much said no. <laughs> that was pretty much it. He's like, no. And then and then uh, the reporter from Kitco, he said, what do you think about, well, quantum computing? And he said, look, he goes, I was just on a panel with uh, the, the quantum computer experts about a week ago. And then he says, like, we're like three or four years away. And then some uh, different blockchains are already quantum computer uh, resistant. So he goes, and we've got four years to do this. So uh, he just said, no, it's not going to happen. Anyhow, that's it. Again, CJ, thanks for coming on. And then uh, let's jump back. All right. Thanks, CJ. So I hope that made a lot of sense. And uh, again, just follow CJ over at Twitter. Links in the description. So now what I want to do is move on to what I think is pretty darn interesting, actually. Uh, nuclear powered Bitcoin mining. And there's the big uproar about clean energy and so on and so forth. So here's the cleanest you can. Well, well I'll get to that. Compass Mining partners with Oklo to power Bitcoin mining operations with advanced fission. Bitcoin mining firm Compass Mining announced the company's entered a 20-year partnership with Oklo Inc., a California-based firm that provides clean, emission-free energy via advanced fission. So this, to me, I think is the next step. If you want uh, the cleanest and reusable, here it is, and this is how they do it. So the Bitcoin Mining Council published a report that estimated around 50%, 6% of Bitcoin's 256 hash rate was powered by clean energy. Pretty good. Although, depends on who you ask, they just want to dismiss that and go, no, it's all coal powered and, you know, run by kids or whatever. So anyhow, uh, on Wednesday, the Bitcoin mining company Compass Mining announced it's partnering with Oklo Inc. in order to acquire clean energy. Details that Oklo will provide 150 megawatts of power to Compass for the first phase of the partnership. Here's a nice little uh, a view of uh, an artist rendering of what it could look like. Looks like Little House on the Prairie just in the future. And... Oklo highlights that the firm's advanced fission process can produce power for Compass for 20 years. And this is what's interesting. And I need to get somebody from Oklo to come in. It states here, there's never a need to refuel with advanced fission processes. And Oklo's advanced fission powerhouses also leverage capabilities to turn nuclear waste into clean energy. I don't know how they make that miracle happen, but I'd love to know. Basically, Advanced fission is a form of nuclear fission in which an atom's nucleus is split into either two or more smaller nuclei. The process introduces an output of ne neutrons and gamma photons, which can be leveraged for all types of energy purposes. So look, uh, if that went over your head, you're not alone. Uh, it sounds great. Sounds good. I'd love to uh, interview somebody about that, which leads me to my next point where we talk about Alex Mashinsky. So this was on Tony's show, Thinking Crypto. Check it out. Link in the description. I'm not going to play it. You can watch it. And really what it comes down to this, Alex reveals that Celsius is getting into the Bitcoin mining. They put $200 million into Bitcoin mining. And they said they actually did it pretty much right before this huge China ban. So it was like a real perfect time. So if you're looking for like yield and things like that, they're doing everything they possibly can. On top of that, he talked about how they have a, a, a transparent community and how you can actually look into what is being used and spent throughout the whole uh, Celsius network, which I think is, is a new process. So uh, to take a look at that, I just thought it was interesting that Celsius is getting into Bitcoin mining. They are uh, here in West Texas, and I wonder if they're going to partner up with Oklo for uh, clean energy and nuclear fission. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then lastly, I would just want, want to talk about, uh, I will be on James's show over there at Invest Answers. And if you haven't watched James, the guy's real smart, real smart, real math, real conservative. I mean, way more conservative than I have ever been. Uh, not as conservative as Clem, but pretty conservative. So uh, check us out in about uh, 30 minutes or so. Uh, it's about, uh, it's 1 p.m. here. It'll be 1 p.m. in about an hour or so. And that is it for today. So look, uh, thanks for watching all the way to the end. I know it's kind of a little bit longer, but there's so much stuff going on. And again, I only put this out not to, 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 to spread FUD, but just so you know, there's gonna be these types of articles out there and you really have to break them down into what people are saying, take the information that is relevant to you and what you think is correct and move on from there. This is not investment advice, just investment opinion, but I still believe in the long term, 
uh, functionality of crypto and the digital asset market. I will continue to dial the cost average, and I think there is a huge rally on the horizon. All right, so thanks so much. Give it a like, give it a subscribe. See you on the next one, or I'll see you on the best answers. See ya.